All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to another game review. Uh, I had the white pieces, so of course you know I played B4. I got D5 played against me, which is not too common, but you do see some play against it. I go B2, Bishop B2. Uh, he goes Bishop to F5. Um, C4 is playable, and then after it captures, oops, excuse me, after it captures, you then play E3, and then he could choose to protect it with a pawn. Then you just get A4. And he can go a6, but that just fumbles the rook. So oftentimes he might go back and uh, try to defend it with the bishop. And he will hold on to it for a little bit. However, he's losing tempo by doing so. So that's one option. But I just went for the safer play. I just went with e3. Oops, sorry. I went knight f3. I must have gone e3 the next move. Yep, so now I go e3. Um, we see e6. So this pawn before it was getting protected. Um just by the fact that this wasn't open, but now that it is, you either want to secure it with a3, or you want to push with b5. So I push. And he contests it, which I protect with c4 now. He captures, and I could actually capture one of two ways. I could capture this way or this way. If I go here, the bishop is then threatening um, b5. I don't like that too much, just because this queen could come here and get like a really nice pin going. And I can protect it with like, you know, a4, or just knight to c3, or just getting my queen over here to b3. There's some things I can do, but I don't want to put unnecessary stress early for no reason. So I just capture this way. Not to mention if he ever contests with a6, then I could go for that line, which I enjoy. Knight d7, knight c3. We get bishop to b4. So I pretty much just ask him what he wants to do with it. And he chooses to take, so I'll gladly take this diagonal castle. This should be two, so I could castle. He goes rook c3. We get castled, and then we see knight to e4. And I don't really like the move that I played in this game. I played queen b3, and the idea is that I'm just, you know, protecting this by capturing him. He's not able to take the pawn. However, <coughs> I actually think that I have a rather strong diagonal right here, so I don't think I should have traded this off, not to mention I have the bishop pair, but he didn't go for it yet anyway. He goes knight c5, so I just jump out of the way. We get b6, and I played knight to d4, so now I'm trying to get him to have some, you know, doubled pawns and create an isolated pawn here on d5, not to mention a knight for bishop is always good. He goes back. And I get this little outpost where I think I'm covering a couple of really good squares. And it's not easy for him to kick me because all of his pawns are already advanced. He'll have to go something like a6 and I'll have a4. I'll still protect it. So he's going to have to take care of this pawn with like his knight or bishop at some point. I don't know how, but that would be how he gets rid of it. So he sidesteps. I put another rook on this file. Or I put a rook on this file. We see a5, and I know Fianchetto is very tempting, but um, that would just fumble the uh, knight. And I don't think that's worth the pass pawn that we get from it, because I think it's pretty easy to shut down still. Um, but yeah. So I just go to the side, I go queen d4. Now he takes, and I chose to take with this pawn. I think either option is fine. Um, but I like this pawn just because I can support this even further or break the center if I want to. Um, so now we get knight coming here with the triple fork. Uh, but I saw this coming. I won to get the pawn. And then he exchanged because this knight was rather annoying on this square. So I got rid of a rather annoying knight. And uh, I only really need one rook, I think, for this attack. So I take the pawn, takes the rook, I recapture. He tries trading. I want nothing to do with trading. I want to be able to push this. Uh, I'd like to get to b1, but it's not possible. So my plan is to try to kind of reroute that to this file. Yep, so he's protecting this square from check. So now I start my rerouting. Uh, he's trying to take this knight out, and then it would be much easier for him to grab the pass pawn. So I very simply just give him the boot, and he goes right back. I go rook to b2, so I get a free move pretty much. Uh, so this is a very nice play on his part. 
So if I were to take the queen, then he takes my queen, and he's looking to get this down pretty soon afterwards. Not to mention this is hanging, which in turn will lead to two other pawns that are potentially hanging. Um, if I wish to move out of the way of this battery, um, then perhaps you know this will be takeable eventually. Um, you know, if I were to go f4 here, for example, then he could just hide. Not to mention, he can also sack this um, at some point. Like, say that I want to start pushing my pass pawn. Uh, b6, takes, takes. He takes his pawn with check. And then he takes another pawn. And we're, well, maybe not this pawn. But um, the idea is that he is very much encroaching in my territory and he pretty much sacks the exchange back to have a better position on me. But I actually found the winning tactic in this position. That would be knight to e7. I don't fall for his trick and pretty much I'm going to be winning a free rook. So if he takes, which I think he did in the game, um, then I take this rook and it's actually mate into. You just block with one and then uh, take and mate. If I were to take this rook here, then it's just a free rook. I'm still guarding this square with my queen. Sorry, I'm still guarding it with my queen, and he obviously can't take that, because that will also be checkmate. It would be nice if his bishop were covering this, but he has e6 in the way, and his queen is in the way of that. So unfortunately, he just ends up losing, and he goes with the move that gets him checkmated. So. Nice little game there, and I think he just resigned here instead of moving his rook. But um, if I were to look at the game review, I think it pretty much agreed with everything I was saying. Uh, yeah, it also didn't like queen going to b3, and that's a positional thing. You don't want to be giving up your, um, you know, double bishop advantage, not to mention it's on a great diagonal. Um, it also did not like... Okay, so it didn't like when I captured it with this pawn, which I don't completely understand, so I'm going to look at it real quick. Um, queen takes is better. And then what? Uh, f6 or a4. a4, f6. Yeah, I guess I don't completely understand why that's better. Um, I guess just because I'll have these pawns unprotected for the time being, whereas if I take the queen, I still have this chain for the most part. Alright, I guess that kind of makes sense to me. I mean, I don't think I would find it in a game. Then let's see what I butchered here. So rook a2 is a mistake. They prefer rook to c1. Okay, so that they're more a fan of me going this route as opposed to me trying to back up this pawn. And then I think there's one other one. Yeah, right here. Oh no, that was the one I just clicked on. So what was this? Huh? Did I miss something? C4 they prefer. Um, I guess the idea is to maybe get an open file this way because I control it with my knight. Okay, in that case, I guess I kind of understand it. So they don't really need me pushing because if I try pushing anyway, he's going to grab the knight. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't until he blundered that he was losing here. So... Yeah, probably would have been better if I was trying to uh, blow that open and give myself a good square for my rook. But you live and you learn, and I'll be stronger for the next game. Uh, but thanks for watching, everyone, and I will catch you in the next video.